the exchange of information is completely like what an entanglement. Um, so what I, what I need you to do is to imagine what it would be like if you were healed. Uh, can you do that? Okay, good. So um, what I'm going to do now is, first of all, I am going to imagine that you are healed. And uh, the second thing is, I'm going to touch two points of your body, nothing, nothing too embarrassing, just it's random two points, but it has to be two points for the quantum entanglement to work. So, uh, yeah, now uh, imagine that uh, what it would be like if you were, uh, if you were healed. <laughs> Uh, that, that all disappears the moment 
that the quantum state gets in touch with the outside world. The moment there is an interaction with the outside world, uh, something sets in that's called decoherence, and this quantum state uh, disappears, and we get the, the actual electron or the actual proton or the actual photon that acts like a normal particle. And uh, actually, what, what I've mentioned as the observer effect at the very top is nothing else than decomposition, which is a, 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 a decoherence, which is a, at the bottom. So that's basically two uh, names for the same thing. Contact with the outside world changes the quantum state. So, what we have is, is kind of, and this, this was puzzling the physicists for, for many, many years, uh, we have these kind of two worlds. We have the quantum state on one hand, uh, that refers to single particles that are isolated from the outside world, where all these strange effects appear, and on the other side we have the classical world of classical particles, or big objects like that one there, and there are no bottom effects there. And uh, as you're going from the one on the left to the one on the right, people thought for a very long time that there were some, I mean, they were looking for explanations for this, and coming up with the idea that the quantum state suddenly collapses into a particle and things like this. And that was, uh, gave, uh, gave way to all kinds of speculation, and uh, the speculation has lived on through philosophy and mysticism, and it's, it's still around today. And, the fact is that physics have actually moved on, and we know nowadays that this is not two totally separate worlds, but that there is a transition zone in between them. And uh, this, we've known about this transi transition zone theoretically for about 40 years. We can experiment with that for about 20 years, and it's still not very well known. So if we go to larger sets of particles, like larger molecules, we can still find some quantum effects, although in principle they behave like classical particles. We go to an incomplete form of isolation from the outside world. We have magnetic fields working on the quantum state. But you'll see some classical and some quantum effects mixing, or in, in living cells, uh, in the molecules of living cells, particles can be half isolated from the outside world, which is basically uh, quantum biology, which uh, Jim Alcalini gave an excellent talk about at the last uh, European Skeptics Conference in London. So this is all. Relatively, uh, fairly, uh, relatively well understood now, and not quite as mysterious as it always seemed. But the one thing to keep in mind that everything that happens in our daily lives happens on the very right of this picture. Everything that happens in our daily lives is basically classical physics. And that gets us to some simple rules of how to avoid being quantum fooled and how to avoid being told quantum woo without really Saying, uh, knowing what to say about this. The first thing uh, to know about quantum nonsense and to be able to not be fooled by quantum nonsense is to understand how it works. And there's actually a pattern that is recurring every time you encounter, or almost every time you encounter quantum nonsense for how it's created. First of all, if you want to make your own quantum nonsense, you start out with a well-established and Hard, some of hard to understand statement from modern physics. Like something that everybody's heard, E equals MC squared, everybody has heard it. Not everybody understands it, very few people know where it actually comes from. But uh, yeah, it's there and people generally accept it. Uh, and physicists would say, okay, this is, this is fine, this is okay, this is acceptable. And what you do next is you start to take the scientific terms out of there, in this case, mass and equivalent, and replace them with kind of their everyday meaning of the same word. So you end up with something like, therefore, matter is simply energy. And at this point, a physicist, a well-meaning physicist, is going to say, well, I know what you're trying to say, but you really shouldn't say it that way. But if you have an audience that's uh, accepted this still as physics, then you can just move on and freely associate any kind of arbitrary bullshit that you want and go move on to that is the energy of our minds. And this is actually an example that I found in exactly this way in the book on hypnosis. So the question is, why do people believe that? Why do we accept that? And the reason, of course, is that relativity and quantum mechanics are well-accepted concepts, although they are contrary to our intuition and everyday experience. And therefore, it's relatively easy to conclude that, yeah, I mean, we have to accept ideas that are contrary to our intuition and experience. Uh, because physics does it all the time. 
Well, the point is that they are contrary to our everyday experience because they are about things that are not part of our everyday experience. And if we're talking about, about our body and our health that are part of our everyday experience, uh, the same things don't necessarily apply. So what would have to be the case for quantum physics and, and relativity to be relevant to the way we lead our lives and to, to the way we treat our bodies? Well, quantum physics might be relevant for your body if your body consists only of a few atoms or if your body temperature is below minus 270 degrees Celsius. Uh, if that's the case, I'd be very surprised if you were sitting here. If that's not the case, then the result of quantum physics is going to be perfectly identical to the results of classical physics and chemistry. Um, what about the theory of relativity? Now, the theory of relativity might be relevant to your body if you regularly move faster than about a million kilometers per hour, if you are heavier than at least a mid-sized comet, or if your mind works in intervals that you, know, you make decisions in intervals of about, about nanoseconds or so. If that is not the case, then the result of the theory of relativity is going to be perfectly identical to classical physics. So these are some kind of rules of thumb to decide uh, whether uh, well, of course, I mean, if we have instruments that make measurements at that rate, yes, fine. Like GPS, for example, works by measuring very short time spans, then you have to take the theory of relativity into account. That's the thing. So, uh, but that's kind of the rule of thumb of, of uh, what you have to look at. There are also some red flags to look out for that are usually, when they come up in a, in a conversation or in a text, that are usually followed by nonsense. And the first one is uh, everything is connected. And we saw that in Deepak Chopra, the very first Deepak Chopra quote I have is every interconnectedness is a moving principle. So this is a typical example of uh, something in quantum physics that uh, this is definitely not something that you can reasonably derive from, from, from quantum physics, not any more than anything is connected, but everything is connected by, by gravity and classical physics, uh, but still it's, it's there. And it's, it's, it's a typical sign that whatever comes after that is probably nonsense. Uh, the next thing is the observer determines the outcome, which is just a misunderstanding of the observer effect that I mentioned. Uh, the, obs the observation causes something to change, but uh, the observer does not determine what uh, is the, going to be the outcome. And we are going to have an example that in just a moment. Uh, then there is this everything consists of waves or fields or energy and to the extreme form of that matter doesn't exist. And unfortunately the former director of the institute where I got my PhD uh, regularly went on the media, media with uh, statements like this, which was basically his personal interpretation of physics and uh, uh, and his first personal philosophical views, but because he was the director of the Max Planck Institute for Physics, he was quoted as an authority. And yeah, and finally, unfortunately, uh, most mentions of, of Schrödinger's cat uh, in, in uh, any kind of non physics and even in most physics uh, texts uh, is an indication that what comes after that is, is nonsense because actually. It's, it's been around for 70 years, and there's really nothing reasonable to say in physics that you might want to talk about for sure, as cat. And this is going to be following us for the next couple of examples, too. Now, if we want to get people to not be fooled by quantum nonsense, uh, the, the reasonable approach for skeptics and the typical approach for skeptics would be to know, say, okay, now we have to educate people more about science, and we have to Physicists have to talk more about, about what they're doing, and there should be more science communication. And uh, the thing is, originally I submitted this talk for the, for the uh, science to the science and the media session, because one of my points is that uh, science communication, the way it's done nowadays, isn't always helpful. And I've left one of my examples in there, which uh, again involves showing as a cat. And I saw this first in a Headline in a German newspaper, it's also in the Washington Post, so we don't have to translate it, I can just use the English one. Schrodinger's cat just got even weirder, even more confusing. This is a headline from last year. 
And uh, yeah, I was wondering what what's going on here. What is uh, again? It's been around. Schrodinger's cat has been around for 70 years, and it hasn't become any more. Doesn't tell us any more reasonable things than it did at the time. So what possibly could there be in new discoveries regarding Schrodinger's cat? So well, maybe the journalist at the Washington Post, general interest newspaper, got things wrong. And let's look at a science magazine. Maybe we, that's going to be more telling. In Science News, that the same time on the same day, said Schrodinger's cat now dead and alive in two boxes at once. Okay, now these are science journalists. They should know what they're talking about, and they should get this from a scientific publication. So, what was actually coming out of the science scientific world? What did scientists actually say that they could have misunderstood that way? Well, look at the original press release from Yale University, because that's where it comes from. And the original press release said, doubling down on Schrodinger's cat. Yale physicists have given Schrodinger's famous cat a second box to play in. Now, wait a minute. So it's not the journalists who came up with this weird stuff. It's, it's the Yale press office, right? I mean, it couldn't possibly have been the scientists themselves. All right, let's look at the original science publication in a science journal. And actually, the journal that they published it in is, uh, well, pretty much one of the, the most down to earth and serious ones that you could probably, probably that possibly look at, at least one of the most reputable ones. It's in science. And uh, the original article in Science, published May uh, uh, 2016, had the headline The Schrodinger Cat Living in Two Boxes. So I looked at the article and I looked, what did they do with the Schrodinger Cat in Two Boxes? What did they do in the first place? Now, what they did was they had two little resonators, cavities about the size of the film box, if you still remember what those look like. And uh, they had these two film boxes side by side, and uh, they had a microwave signal, about 100 photons each, so a very, very, very weak microwave signal, moving up and down in these two resonators. And they created an entanglement between those two microwave signals. Which, in a way, is an interesting physics result. It's certainly an interesting and hard to do experiment. The question that keeps bothering me is where is the cat? <laughs> and the answer, of course, is there is no cat. This whole experiment has nothing whatsoever to do with Schrodinger's cat. I mean, it doesn't even address the question that Schrodinger's, Schrodinger was talking about in Schrodinger's cat. It's, it has nothing whatsoever to do with it. The only possible connection that you can create with Schrodinger's cat is that at some point, physicists have started talking about every, every quantum state that involves more than two particles as a cat state. But, which is stupid in itself, but I mean, as long as you're talking among physicists, the others are going to know what you're talking about. The moment you put this on the headline of a publication and it ends up in the headline of a regular general interest newspaper, people are just not going to understand what you're talking about. And you're simply going to be promoting quantum woo. And uh, if you're wondering why I, I keep picking on Schrodinger's cat, well, uh, let's look at some of the quantum woo out there. And uh, let's, let's look at a German blog that's called Detox Quantum. And uh, I probably don't have to tell you what the lady running this blog normally sells. And uh, she's on her blog, she's written an article, I think that was uh, from the beginning of 2017, on Schrodinger's cat. And she writes the following. Through his experiences and expectations linked to them, the observer himself controls the result. And I've mentioned this as a typical red flag. His emotions determine the vibration of his thinking, and his thinking manifests matter. In this case, Mr. Schrödinger's cat. If Mr. Schrödinger, when opening the box, is in panic about finding his cat dead, that will happen. If he is happily looking forward to a coming experience with his cat, that is what will happen. Quantum mechanics is really cool. <laughs> now there is, there is one sentence in this, and there is actually one sentence in this entire article that is perfectly reasonable and uh, perfectly fine, and that is quantum mechanics is really cool. Uh, unfortunately, uh, whoever has written this has absolutely understood absolutely nothing about quantum physics. Uh, and, I mean, First of all, and I've 
mentioned this decoherence, something that's connected with the outside world, cannot possibly be in a quantum state. Uh, so, uh, no cat can ever be in a quantum state, at least not a living one. Uh, and uh, so, but suppose uh, Schrodinger thinks that this example is not looking at a cat, he's actually, he was actually looking at a quantum state. Still, his expectations would not determine the outcome because when you measure the quantum state within the probabilities defined by the quantum state, the result that you get is completely random and there's no way you can influence them. That's exactly what quantum physics says. So this is the exact opposite of what she's saying, that what she's saying is kind of this the secret uh, thing of wish the world as you want it and it's going to happen, and that's the exact opposite of what quantum physics says. And if you think this is a German problem, well, you can find an article on Conscious Life News with the title Bending Spoons, Bending Reality, and Not Enjoying as Cat. It's going to be exactly the same nonsense. Um, but you cannot only uh, have living and dead cats, you can also speculate about burying a cat. And burying a cat is stupid, as was the German uh, parapsychologist Walter von Lubadu says in an interview in the prestigious German newspaper, Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung. The paper asked him, uh, the, the whole thing was about, they asked him what the German football coach could do to make his players play better. And uh, he said he should create an entanglement between his players. <laughs> and again, an entanglement can only exist in a quantum state, and a quantum state can only exist if something is completely isolated from the outside world. And I've, I mean, I've heard about the vacuum and the head of a football player, but I've never heard of football players around by a vacuum. So, no football players cannot be in a quantum state, uh, so they cannot be entangled. This is, from a physics point of view, perfect nonsense. And we're going to another country, uh, trying to look a little bit around Europe. So let's go to Italy and to a book by Giovanni Bota, Spiritual Quantum Coaching. And he has an example in there about uh, about uh, meditating Maharishi's uh, yogic flyers and their effect on supposedly reducing uh, violent crime in Washington an experiment in uh, 1993. And uh, he explains this by what of the quantum entanglement. So the, the, the uh, flying yogis are entangled with the criminals and uh, as they're meditating, the criminals will become less violent. Uh, I don't have to anything more about that. But this is really interesting. This is from Switzerland, and this is uh, a consulting firm, a management consulting firm. I'm a, I'm a management consultant nowadays, so this is pretty close to, to home for me. Uh, and they say, quantum physics today assumes that the space in each atom, each atom is filled with countless elementary particles. They can connect entanglement and exchange information. With quantum physical technology, it is now possible to scan the information carriers of the zero point field, retrieving information quality, and inform them, adjusting information quality. The system law of the experts allows the use of quantum physics based on white noise. So, and this, is an, and this is really interesting for me. Now, where as a, as a, a management consultant, I normally have to spend some days to do a market analysis. They just need a couple of minutes to read the results from the white noise, and when they've come to a conclusion, they'll just derive the information that they want to put into the company and put that back into the white noise. And then they're done, and they can write a bill. And if you're wondering what kind of companies will pay those bills, well, uh, they have it on the web page. Uh, there's uh, one of the largest European insurance companies, two, uh, two uh, not so small engineering firms. This was private bank and one of the largest food companies of the world. And this is not just in Switzerland, and this is not just one company. In the German-speaking areas alone, I have found, uh, I mean, these are, these are these antennas that they use to read the information out of the white noise. Uh, so, and there are, there are two, uh, two companies producing these devices, and there are actually dozens of consulting firms offering this kind of service, and there's, uh, um, I said close to home, there is one actually a, a five minute walk from where I live. Uh, yeah, and so uh, now we're, we're getting to, if, if you find that this is not absurd enough, uh, let us get to tachyons. Um, and uh, we're going to Belgium, and uh, 
In, in Antwerp and in Ghent, you can learn how to do tachyon massages, and they say about this. A tachyon massage is done with the unique tachyon bars. I mean, these are the tachyon bars that this massage is made with. These massage bars, the tachyonized oils you use, are meant to provide a particularly efficient and relaxing massage. A tachyon is a subatomic particle that moves faster than light. Well, that, of course, is uh, contrary to the theory of relativity. So, uh, discovering a particle that moves faster than the speed of light is, uh, actually would have been a really, really interesting result in physics. And experimental physicists have been looking for that for about a century. And unfortunately, as I said, that would be really interesting. Unfortunately, they haven't found anything in more than a century. Um, so physicists are completely have, for, for a century. Physicists have been unable to actually find tachyons, but in Antwerp you can get a massage with them. <laughs> and if after that massage you feel really relaxed and you come home and you feel in the mood for something more, don't worry, you can get the tachyon products for that too. So how about a passion you tachyon lubricant, also with particles moving faster than the speed of light, so for the ultimate quickie. Uh, so if you if, 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 if for some reason you, you find you, you cannot manage, uh, how about the tachyon sex tonic for men? And finally, we're getting to my absolute favorite product, don't worry, I don't have it at home, but it is, I find it absolutely fascinating. The Tech Young Glass Plug, which you can insert into your root chakra. <laughs> and frankly, at this point, there is nothing left I have to say. Thank you.